Welcome to the Toilet Training Series Part 1. In this first segment, what we're going to be discussing is what does my child need to do in order to be completely toilet trained? Now, this may come as a bit of a surprise that the list of tasks that my child needs to master in order to be trained is kind of long. And the reason why I want to discuss this first before we talk about anything else is because when I understand what's involved in this process and I know what my child needs to do, my frustration level is going to be lower and my patience and understanding is going to be increased. And that's going to make the whole entire process go a lot smoother. So what does my child need to do in order to be trained? Number one, the first thing that my child needs to do is that his brain has to get the message that his bladder or bowel is full. Now what happens is when a baby is born, the message that the bladder or bowel is full is going to the spine. And the spine is sending back in a reflex kind of a way that yes, you can empty. There's no thought process involved. There's no decision-making skills involved here. The brain doesn't have to get involved at all on a higher level. It's just a reflex of, you know, the spine, the bladder or bowel says I'm full, the spine sends back empty, and that's it. Now, during toilet training, what has to happen is that the brain has to get the message that the bladder or the bowel is full in order for the child to be able to make the decisions that are necessary for him or her to be trained. So that's number one. Number two, the child has to remember that she's no longer wearing a diaper. All her life she's been wearing diapers, well, now she's not. And that is because step number three is the child has to know that when that initial message comes from the bladder or the bowel that it's full, now she's gonna have to hold the urine or the stool when she first gets the message. So step number four is gonna be, okay, the bladder or the bowel is full, I understand that, I'm holding, I know I'm not wearing a diaper. Number four is I have to stop what I'm doing. So my child has to stop what he's doing and actually step number five is gonna be get to the bathroom or the potty. Step number six is gonna be taking off the clothes that need to come off in order to be able to release. Now, step number seven is gonna be key letting it go. Remember, the child, whereas when they were first born, wasn't holding it, and it was just as soon as the bladder or bowel was full, it was releasing. Now, because my child has to hold until they get to the bathroom or the potty, now my child has to relax the muscles that are holding and let go so that the urine and the stool can be emptied. Number eight is that not only does the child have to let it go, but here we're gonna need a little bit of patience. And that's because the child has to wait until the bladder or the bowel completely empty. So especially when we're talking about stool, this may take some time. And if you've ever seen a young child being trained, sometimes they sit down and pop right back up and say, I'm done. Are you sure you're done? You might not be, right? So they're gonna have to have that patience to wait in order to be tr really trained. They're gonna have to wait till it's completely empty. Number nine is a list of accessory skills. These are not absolutely necessary in a, in, for a child to be trained, but we kind of would like them to learn this. And those skills are gonna include wiping, putting their clothes back on, flushing the toilet, washing their hands. And yes, we're going to be helping them along with these accessory skills for a while, um, especially with wiping, maybe even a year or two after they're trained. But we would like that to be part of the process so that they learn how to take care of themselves. Now, step number 10, they're going to have to repeat this process five to eight times a day from the beginning all the way to the end. So it sounds like a little bit of a tall order, hmm? Well, that's okay, 
we don't have to worry that this is too much for the child because when they're ready, they get it. All of these steps from the beginning to the end, they do it. So stay tuned for part two, where we're gonna find out how do I know when my child is ready for all of these steps.